The needs are many, but the funding uh, most of the times uh, is not adequate. We sit down as a management, uh, to, we call it a budget allocation committee to prioritize the needs and it is very difficult. We have nine wards in the Department of Pediatrics. In these nine wards, we've got only three suction machines to suction the secretions for the child to breathe properly. Our biggest need is patient monitor. We have about 200 patients coming in every day. We only have two patient monitors at the moment. I'm a physician working in HIV medicine. I would like to have two machines for viral loads and CD4 count. Thank you. Reagents. There have been so inconsistent in the supply of reagents by our central medical stores. So this is really uh, affecting our service delivery, especially to the patients. Our need, especially in the critical care department, is uh, vent uh, ventilators, patient ventilators. Staff. We have plenty plus patients, but very few staff on the ground. By staff, I mean nurses, clinical officers, doctors, specialists. One ventilator costs about 60 million kwacha. A patient monitor costs 2.5 million kwacha. If I have one billion Malawi kwacha for the purchase of reagents, that will take me six months in operation without any interruption in the department. You're looking at how much does it cost to retain staff so that even if their salaries are low, but if they need to put up an IV line, the cannula should be there, the tape should be there. And I'm here to see somebody who's put a figure on that. Each section machines is costing 500,000 Malawi kwacha, and we need 20 section machines immediately. We use mostly judgment, our own judgment, practice on the ground. The management is composed of clinical heads of departments and uh, uh, matrons and administrators, meaning that our combined judgment hopefully uh, uh, takes us, uh, moves us forward in terms of uh, the allocations. Well, it's a give and take. If uh, one head of department is uh, vocal and maybe good at convincing, then he'll, he'll get part of uh, whatever he came to, to get. Sometimes you do not have the evidence to say if we fund this and leave out this, uh, what will be the effect and the like. We have a business plan uh, which is costed, but because we're just overwhelmed with the needs, uh, sometimes we overlook whatever we activity we budgeted and we tap uh, from that and you tap from another uh, sub-item until you, uh, you make it to what uh, this doctor uh, wants uh, his department to be. So we really need uh, health economics in all fronts, academically, but also implementation and policy making. you are making decisions, you are talking also about choices. And choices, uh, you are landing in the area of dilemmas, when you have got several competing obligations which you need to deliver. But practically speaking, you can only allocate one place. This is what is happening in, uh, in Malawi at the moment. Should we allocate money in prevention or in treatment? Should we allocate our money in training more specialists who will be going uh, to the districts or take people from the district to the central hospitals? Where should we invest money now? More in the typical diseases in the global health like malaria, TB, HIV, or non-communicable diseases like cancer, blood pressure, and uh, diabetes. In health economics, we have a set of methods and tools to help decision makers determine the best way of using their resources in healthcare. There are two primary measures which tend to be used in practice. One is called the Quality Adjusted Life Year, the QALY, and the other is called the Disability Adjusted Life Year, the DALI. There are two objectives of healthcare. One is to extend the duration of individuals' lives, and the other is to improve 
the quality of their lives. And we bring both of those things together in the DALI or the Quali. With Qualis and DALIs, we can actually compare the health that would be generated, for instance, through spending on treatments of malaria, with the health that would be generated through prevention of TB or through surgical procedures. So it is, if you like, a composite measure of health. The metric of the Quali or the DALI can be used in a common way across preventions and treatments. These types of interventions are doing very different things, but the, the, the ultimate aim is, is common. It's about improving the health of the individuals who receive healthcare. So we're going to create a population of Malawi inside a computer. There'll be individuals, and they'll be being born, living their lives, getting diseases, and dying. And we'll be able to experiment with offering that population in the computer different sets of interventions and we can see which set of interventions tend to generate the most health for that population which can be some kind of a guide as to what might be the best of interventions to deploy in the real Malawi. We want to get research close to policy making so that we use policy makers to shape research and policy makers use researchers to generate evidence and analysis to support their decision making. There's a lot of money that goes into doing research but a lot of the time it's research that's not uh, uh, context sensitive, it's not pragmatic. It's extremely sort of, uh, um, it's, it's at an arm's length from, from the realities of the decisions the researchers or the evidence is trying to inform. So the outcomes from economic analysis are not trying to tell the policymaker what to do. We're not prescribing the decision that should be taken, but we're trying to inform the process of policymaking. We know that uh, wrong decisions have got a cost, but also wrong values are behind any decision are costly. To have an optimal decision, you need evidence, appropriate evidence, and the appropriate values. The evidence from health economics is more objective. We believe that we are going to address the real needs of the people and we are likely to get uh, better outcomes in terms of health benefits. It's a very long process, but what I see here is that the most important thing is to start and get the, the, the concepts accepted, that we need to take a more objective approach to uh, determining our priorities. What we're trying to do now is strengthen the support we give to countries to contextualise those data that we've been coming out with. So instead of just taking the essential medicine list or the guidelines and directly implementing them, really working with them to say what's going to work for you, how is this going to work in your setting, what drugs do you need to procure, how are you going to do that, how are you going to make sure the services get to where they need to go. I believe that uh, Tanzanians after the, uh, the four years, a more robust model will come, we, uh, health economics and health system model, which will actually be responsive to the needs of, uh, of uh, Malawi and the region. Thank you very much.